Look at these four diamonds, or actually I should say gemstones, because they aren't all diamonds. One is a natural earth mine diamond, one is an artificial lab diamond, one is a cubic zirconia stone, and one is a moissanite stone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tell which is which. I'm Rick Buck, and I've been a diamond consultant for over six years. There are a few ways to tell what stones we have here. And let's start by locating the moissanite because that is the easiest, in my opinion, to detect of all the fake diamonds. There's one dead giveaway for most moissanite today and it's found by doing what I call the fog test. I will take these four stones and fog them up with my breath as you would on a car window as a child and you will spot the moissanite very easily. The moissanite will fog faster, easier, and stay fogged longer. So you can see the second one from the left stays fogged much longer than the others. The others barely fog, if at all. Just to show you how well this technique works, these are four different stones. The three on the right are moissanites, and the one on the left is a diamond. You can see what happens when I fog them with my breath. All three moissanites fog up. The diamond doesn't. So back to the original four that we were analyzing. We will take the suspected moissanite out and look at it some more. Here we are measuring its diameter with a Boley gauge. You can see it is about 6.5 millimeters in diameter. If it were a diamond, a 6.5 diameter diamond would be about one carat, which you take and divide it by five and it gives you the weight in grams, which is 0.2 grams. You can see that it matches up pretty close. So you might think maybe it is a diamond. However, you're gonna have to follow me for a second because you can mimic the diameter to weight ratio of a diamond with a moist knife, but the rest of how the diamond is cut will look slightly different to achieve that. So to analyze the cut, we look through what we call an asset scope. The stone on the left is a moissanite and the stone on the right is a diamond for reference. The inner blue arrows on the left moissanite are stumpier than the diamond on the right. So I can tell I am definitely correct about this being a moissanite. Now I showed you those arrows with the asset scope, but you can definitely tell in daylight as well if you know what you're looking for. Once again, the stone on the left is moissanite and the stone on the right is a diamond. You can see the stumpier arrows on the inner circle of the moissanite and the longer ones on the diamond and this is in just pure daylight. You see, because moissanite is lighter and the diameter is the same, to get it to weigh the same as a carrot, it had to make it longer. And so the underlying peak is a little bit deeper to increase the weight. But the problem is once the depth increases, the inner arrows look much stumpier too. So match all of those up with the asset scope and those blue spikes or arrows we just looked at, as you can see, do not match up with what you would expect a 6.5 one carat diamond to look like. You see, you can't have it all. The diameter, carat weight, depth, cut design, and fogginess can't all three match up. Now, there is one last way to tell it is a moissanite. Just look for an inscription. Most certified diamonds today will have an inscription that you can see under magnification that will match up with a lab certificate and report. So here's that diamond that we were just looking at and its corresponding lab report. Once you have this number, you can look up that lab report with its inscription number online. Now look for the inscription on the moissanite. Some moissanites like this one have an inscription too, some don't. But this moissanite has the inscription done sloppily on the girdle as well with a lab called GRA. I don't know much about this GRA, but it has a website where you can look up your moissanite as well. So it definitely is a moissanite and I am definitely sure this is moissanite. Before we move on to the others, let me show you a terrible way to test for diamonds and moissanites. Here's a $100 diamond tester from Amazon. The tester is very inconsistent. It says the moissanite is a diamond sometimes and it says that more often than it will tell you that it is a moissanite. Again, here are three moissanites and sometimes this diamond tester says that they are diamonds and sometimes it says that they aren't. Lastly, a cheap $20 diamond tester says this moissanite is actually a diamond. So they are inconsistent and if they're inconsistent it means they are not worth it at all. 
Now let's go back and look at all four stones again. Since I know one is cubic zirconia, let's look at all of them under normal indoor lights. I can pretty much tell this stone on the far left is a cubic zirconia. It doesn't have the distinguishable spikes that we saw on the moissanite or diamonds earlier. In case you already forgot, remember those blue arrows we could see on the asset scope? Now here is the diamond on the right and the cubic zirconia on the left under the asset scope. The blue arrows look more like the rest of the facet triangles of different colors on the cubic zirconia. Now, ready for the dead giveaway that this is a cubic zirconia? When I flip this stone over and put it up against lines or letters on a piece of paper, you can easily see those letters and lines through the stone. When I look through the diamond upside down, you can't really see the letters through the diamond because it's taking not the light from underneath it, but the light that's coming from above it and reflecting it back at your eye. The moissanite is much like the diamond in that aspect too. To make it even more obvious, when the cubic zirconia is face down under the asset scope, you can see right through it and that's because once again cubic zirconias don't really refract light they just shine light through it the cubic zirconia is on the left and the diamond is on the right face down not that we need more proof but here the diameter of the cubic zirconia is 6.5 millimeters which means it should be around one carat if it were a natural diamond but this is almost around two carats so it is just more and more obvious that this is a cubic zirconia now, those diamond testers from earlier can actually detect that this is not a diamond and likely a cubic zirconia. Even the cheap testers give similar results. Before I get to the best part, make sure you watch all my videos on how to plan the perfect proposal. I have thousands of ideas and tips on things like how to plan and photograph the proposal so you have great memories. Also, if you want more money to spend on the engagement, I show you how to save hundreds to thousands on the ring and she will be impressed. Jewelers know that this is a one-time purchase you know nothing about, so take all my tips so you don't get ripped off and use the links below this video because those are the best places to buy rings and also help to save money on those rings so you can apply that to an amazing engagement. Okay, now we have the two diamonds to the right. I probably should have started with testing for earth diamonds because a lot of times it is the easiest to detect. Here I take focused long wave UV light from a single beam and I shine it on the four stones. And you see the third one from the left faintly starts to glow while the others don't at all. This is called fluorescence. Only earth created diamonds will do this with long wave UV light in this manner. So this is definitely the earth mined diamond. Why? Almost all earth created diamonds have trace fluorescent molecules in their elemental matrix. Lab created diamonds will not have fluorescence to long wave fluorescence. Some will have a different type of a glow to long wave fluorescence, but it will look different than this uniform glowing. Here I added another diamond with strong fluorescence on the far right to show you strong fluorescence. Now it is true that there are some earth created diamonds that don't have fluorescence in them at all, but most have at least a little bit. For example, in our original four diamonds, the earth created diamond I have detected shouldn't have any fluorescence according to the GIA fluorescence grade as seen in its corresponding lab report. But with my intense focused UV light, you can see it very much does have fluorescence. Not all UV lights will work as I've been saying. Nail salon UV lights aren't good for this test because they will only reveal a strong fluorescence. You see here the third from the left is the strong fluorescence and the fourth from the left is our same diamond that supposedly had no fluorescence. It looks like just all the other stones that aren't diamonds. But we know it does have fluorescence with good UV light in the right settings. Cheap UV lights won't normally reveal the mildly fluorescent diamond as my light did. Now, the actual best way to see this is a real diamond, as we said earlier, is to look up the inscription under magnification and then look up the lab report online. Not all diamonds have this inscription, but most do today. Once you get the certificate, just match the characteristics to the diamond that you have. On the corresponding report, you can see this diamond is about 6.41 to 6.44 millimeters in diameter, depending on where you measure the diameter. And the weight should be 1.01 carats or 2.02 grams. This is pretty much matching up. So we can just be pretty much sure that this is the earth created diamond from that group. And we can tell that 
from the lab report and its corresponding inscription number. The best way to test for lab created diamonds on your own is to just use the process of elimination. The diamond on the right here doesn't fog, it doesn't have fluorescence like earth created diamond, it is lacking anatomy like cubic zirconia, and it has all the other properties of a diamond with weights that match how a diamond should weigh. So this is likely the lab diamond. There are more sophisticated ways to tell this is a lab created diamond that a professional must do. They can test for lack of nitrogen with light spectroscopy. As you can see here, this peak highlighted on this report indicates from the spectroscopy that the diamond tested has nitrogen in it. And it's highly probable this diamond that was tested on this report was a real diamond. I don't have this expensive equipment to test our diamonds, but some professionals will. Professionals can also look at the microscopic flaws that the diamond has and can tell if the flaws are typical of an earth created diamond or a lab created diamond. But once again, the best way to tell is to look at the lab certificate. All reputable diamond stores sell certified diamonds that come with a lab report or certificate. You should just watch my video on reading lab certificates to know everything about them. It is the best way to avoid getting ripped off on buying a diamond. And once again, this report coincides with the inscription on the girdle of the diamond. In fact, most lab grow diamonds are inscribed as such on the diamond. Like ours, it will just say lab grow microscopically on the girdle of the diamond. It doesn't get much easier than that. And that means the professionals already did all this work for you. You can see the difference under microscopes with a little training for a lot of low clarity grade lab grown diamonds, but it's too long of an explanation for this video and you have to know the different characteristics depending on how the lab diamond was created but that is the gist of it here is the difference in sparkle of the four diamonds this isn't an official test there are different types of sparkle but in some ways diamonds sparkle more and in some ways moissanites can sparkle more to me cubic zirconia and moissanites do just look duller than the natural diamond. I hear a lot of people say you can't really tell the difference between all of these, but you really can. And some of them are very quite obvious the way you can tell. Moving on. On my channel, I have tons of proposal tips and idea videos from how to plan, photograph, and deliver the perfect proposal that she is going to love. Also, watch one of my many how to shop for engagement rings and diamond videos. Or mark my words, they know how to rip you off. The best places to buy diamonds are in the description below to save hundreds to thousands on engagement rings and they are the best and most reputable places to buy diamond engagement rings. Like, subscribe, and watch another one now.